Hey everybody, I got this video from Clayton Peoples, who's a great refrigeration tech, uh, not too far away from us. Uh, he sent in on how to use 45% silver solder when brazing together steel and copper. Now the first thing I wanna say here is that he did some things in this video that I would not do, I and mean, I wanna highlight what those are just so that you know the differences. I think it's still a, a really nice video because he does this all the time and obviously has great results. One thing that I would do differently is most of the flux manufacturers tell you in the case of like for example the Harris guide that when applying flux to only apply it to the male end so that way you don't get flux inside the lines that's one thing another thing is is that after he applies the 45 percent silver rod he uses 15 percent on top and uh, that will probably work because the 15 percent will bond to silver and copper but 15 percent has phosphorus in it and that's why it's called phos copper and the phosphorus does not react with the steel properly so that that doesn't work with steel so anytime you're working with steel you don't want to use a phosphorus bearing rod. Now in his case, what I really like that he did is he made sure to draw that 45% into the joint really well. What you want to do is make sure you prep the pipe real well. Nice and clean. Don't touch it with your oily, grubby phalanges. Make sure you clean this fitting up real good. Again, this is brazing copper to steel with 45%. Get some stay seal. Brazing flux. Brazing flux. We're going to put that. We're going to put that all over here. This has got acid in it, so don't get it on any cuts. Clean the inside real well like that. Fit it on there. Here's a little tip. You can tighten that on and it will keep the pipe from turning. Not going to go too tight because you will dent the copper. There we go. This is pre-fitted. You want your tanks. You can turn them on. 10 and 20. Normally what I run. 20 on the oxygen. 10 on the acetylene. Mm -hmm. Always clean up. 45. After you touched it. Okay. Look at there, all the way around, nice coverage. And you'll notice what we did, we used it on a full stick, that way you got something to hold. Because if you would have used a stub like that, it would have been very shaky, someone holding it. So there's how you 45% to steal, right there. Nice view, look at there, all the way around. Clean surface is very, very important. Another thing that I would do differently is protect that angle valve with some wet rags or wet rag from refrigeration technologies to keep that from overheating. You know, th these things are designed to deal with a lot of heat, so in, in this case, I'm sure it's fine, but that's something I would do differently. One thing that he did, and you'll notice it in the video that he doesn't mention, is that he mid-seated that valve. And that's important when you're brazing to those valves, so that way the seals don't get stuck in one position or, or another. So that, that valve was mid-seated, which is exactly what you wanna do before you braze to a valve. Another thing is flowing nitrogen while brazing. Again, it's only one joint, so not the end of the world, but flowing nitrogen while brazing will help prevent from building up oxides on the inside of that valve and in the case of you know working with steel you're not necessarily going to see that cupric oxide on the steel side because it's copper oxide but you will see it on the copper side when you heat that copper so my steps would be protect the valve mid seat the valve flow nitrogen use uh, 45 percent or my favorite product is the 56 percent flux coated rod put your flux on the male end of the rod and make sure that you draw that solder into the joint. So start by applying your heat to the male side, the actual tube side, so that way it conducts heat into the joint and then move your flame over to the connector itself. Recognizing that steel does heat differently. It heats more in spots because it's not as conductive. So when you apply heat to the steel, the heat stays more concentrated in one place. So you're gonna wanna move it around on the steel in order to get that 45% or 56% flux coated to flow into the joint. All in all, great video. I like to show these things because it represents what's really being done in the field and he shows some nice tips 
tips for uh, some things to do. For example, like using the, the large piece of copper for holding it uh, is a really nice tip as well. So thanks to Clayton for sending this to me and all of you out there. Uh, if you have any other top tips or videos that you wanna send, feel free to do so.